others, helping others. Kind of a different sermon uh, this morning, but, uh, but it, I believe it's needed. Um, you know, in the world today, we're living in people, uh, because they're getting survival mode, they just think about themselves a lot. And so what we need to think about helping others and helping people from all uh, places in life, amen, and the people need help, and we need to show real friendship and the love of Jesus to people, amen, and just even the simplest things make a difference, like sending somebody a birthday card, like in a lot, a lot that seems to be a lost art in a lot of people's lives today. Or wishing somebody a happy birthday or something like that. But it's just really important. So let's go ahead and pray. And uh, so I'm just, this is a preface or introduction. We'll pray as we go ahead as we get into the word. Father God, we ask your blessing upon your word. And Father, we thank you for your goodness. Father, I pray for utterance in your Holy Spirit. Boldness to speak as I ought to speak. Lord, I pray that your, your word, your seed would fall on good ground. The good ground of our hearts. Father, and bring forth good fruit. Father, and that you'd be glorified, that you would be magnified, that we'd be changed, and we'd be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Father, God, helping others. And we thank you for, I thank you for each and every person that is here today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So don't take this message for somebody who isn't here today. You just take it for yourself and go ahead and do it. I'm, I'm going to start out with John chapter uh, 13. Uh, St. John 13, verse 34. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. And uh, uh, praise God for, uh, for uh, um, our Andrew, Brother Andrew, and, and the sound both there, you're doing the computer for us so that you, know, you don't even have to look in your Bible. But it's important to know where these things are in your Bible. Uh, okay, and, and here, I think I'm reading out of King James Version, yeah. And it says, uh, Jesus said, A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's the key there, that we just don't love one another. A lot of times people quote that verse and say, Well, the commandment is that we just love one another. Now, we need, love, need to love one another as Jesus has loved us. So that's a, is that a high standard? That's a high standard. Okay. And by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. What? If you have love one for another. And, that, uh, and so the world would know that we're Christians by our love. Not by whether or not we pray in tongues. I'm all for praying in tongues. Praying in the spirit and everything. Amen. But that's not how they know that we're Christians. Okay. Uh, they know that we're Christians by our love. Okay, and Galatians 6 verse 2 says, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we want to help each other, help people with their burdens and what they're going through. A- amen? And so fulfill the law of Christ. How, how many of you like it when people help you? You like it when people help you, amen? But, but we also need to, what, turn around and help other people. We need to help other people. And the people we help first, who are the people we help first? Okay, right, but help your family first. Of course, your family, if you have any kids, and then one brother said the household of faith, yeah, that's a little further down the line. But if you, uh, the Bible says that if a man doesn't provide for his own family, he's worse than an infidel. Uh, an infidel is an unbeliever. So we need to what? Take, we need to help our families first. Amen. Say families first. Families first. And then help your friends. Right, and then your colleagues and your neighbors. Okay, we want to help one another. And then uh, and we want to help people from all, uh, this is at the end of the sermon, but I felt I'm going to share it now. We need to help people from all walks of life. So you help people who are lesser than you. Okay, help people who are lesser than you. Help people who are peers, who are kind of like your equals. Okay, and we also need to help people who are, who are higher Help people who are higher, who are kind of maybe not your equal, but are still up higher. There's, listen, there's some great ministers. We saw some ministers at the Pittsburgh Praise, I and mean, they're doing a wonderful job in our city. They're doing a great job, but it takes a lot of people helping them. So maybe that you can help somebody like a minister or somebody who's really doing good things for God, and they might have more money than you. That's what I'm talking about, right? And you want to help them to do what the work of Christ. Amen. 
Praise God. I'm glad we have partners in our church here. I am thank you so glad that you're members and partners with us doing the work of the ministry here. And I, I appreciate that so much. So, but, but we uh, do want to help people who are, who are lesser th- than us. And we want to help, uh, help those that are peers. But, um, so we want to h- help f- with family first, then our friends and our colleagues and our neighbors. And our neighbors. So family should be first. And then we help our friends. And when a family, I mean, you need to help your aunt, right? And things like that. Praise God. I've got an aunt who's 97 years old. 97 years old. And she fell down this week, you know, and um, broke something. And I'm, I'm not even sure that she knows what she broke. But I called her on the phone and talked to her. And my brother's looking after her. My cousins are looking after her because she didn't have any kids. And so just looking after her, trying to love her. And, uh, and that's what we try to do as a church, but it, it, uh, we need each, the church to do it, not just Pastor Chris's job. That's Pastor Chris's job, uh, okay? And I try to do it the best I can when I'm sharing, but this is all of us helping each other, help, uh, helping each other in Christ, a- amen. And, um, you know, so especially old people, that's what I, I just emphasize, that need help in our society, people who are older. Oh, okay, and giving, giving isn't just about money. A lot of times people say, well, you're, you're giving. Well, I thank God that you give to the church, but giving is not just about money, oh, okay? It's, um, so you don't need to be rich in order to be a giver, uh, praise God. And giving to others is as simple sometimes as a smile. Hi, yeah, good morning, and, and how many remember Brother Booker T.? I mean, I just like being around. He was a giver, man. He, he a giver. He, he, and you say, a giver? Really? No, he, he didn't always have a bunch of money. But he would walk down the side and say, hey, hi, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. You know, just loving on people, loving on everybody. Amen. And giving. He was a real blessing to me, too, and, and, and doing all kinds of things and everything like that. But, but that's what I'm saying. He was uh, giving kind words. Just give a simple, kind word to somebody. You know, people need kind words. Don't they need kind words? And I, I remember that in a thoughtful just, gesture. And it can it include giving time. Sometimes it's giving time and care uh, um, and, and skills, thoughts, and attention. And sometimes it, uh, it means as much uh, more than, like I said, financial gifts. Sometimes you can give that. But helping, helping others boosts your happiness. When you help somebody else and help make them happy, don't you get happy? Hey, don't you get happy? Amen. When you bless a little kid and they get really happy. Amen. And I get happy when we bless the little kids. Amen. Around Christmas time and things like that. You know, I get really happy uh, doing that. And I mean, I dropped my guitar pick. I'm going to pick this guy up here. I say, why do you do that? Because I'm a perfectionist. I don't ever notice that. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm like, have you ever seen Mr. Monk on TV? How many have seen Mr. Monk? Uh, well, Sister Belinda lives with Mr. Monk. <laughs> So you all need to pray for her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I don't go in a room going like that, though. Pretty close sometimes. <laughs> and and uh, so praise God. But, but we can help other people. We can help them. And, and, and it increases your satisfaction and your sense of meaning in life. You know, there's too many j- g- jimmies out there saying, gimme, 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 gimme. Meaning in life is just not to store treasures upon yourself. That's not the meaning of life. But it, when you help other people, it boosts your happiness. And, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it helps your feelings of competence and, and improves our mood and reduces stress. You know, some people become even suicidal because they're not helping anybody else. All they're thinking about is what? themselves. Uh, you know, one of the best things I, I've ever done when I've gone, going, sometimes going through things, I make a, an effort to go maybe visit somebody in a nursing home. How many ever been involved in nursing home ministry? Ever gone to nursing home and stuff? Man, when you, when you leave that nursing home, you're just like, praise Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I'm walking out of this nursing home. I, I'm walking out of here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't have any problems at all, Lord. I don't have any problems at all. Amen, because you're a blessing to them. And then, then I I've, I've brought my guitar in there and just played the guitar in nursing home many a time. And they just get all happy and everything. Like, you're the greatest guy on earth. I was like, oh, thank you. But I'm not the greatest guy on earth. Jesus is. 
Amen. But you, you just need to help, help other people. And kindness toward others is the glue that which helps us to connect. Our, our model for the church is what? Tell, reach, and connect. So we want to connect with other people. And a lot of times we do have opportunities. We help people with money or, or things that they're going, uh, uh, money or food. That's what I'm saying, food. I meant to say food. And, uh, but kindness and caring is also is contagious. Then you get rub off on somebody, and they're showing kindness and caring. And then they, sh- and then they show uh, kindness and caring. And they, what, pay it forward. You know, you heard the, the expression, pay it forward. You know, when somebody does something good for you, Amen. And, uh, uh, and I, I tell guys that sometimes when we help. One th- and I, sometimes, you know, I'm praying for him and everything. We had one fellow come by, and he was living out of his car, basically, just recently. And, and so we helped him out as a church and everything. And then I prayed for him and everything. And I said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Yeah. Like when you, when you make it big and you make it rich, you know, come back to the church and, and bless us so we can help other people. I've, I've rumped into many, many people that our church has helped through the decades. And I bump in and I tell them, Sister, they're doing great. They're like, Pastor Chris, so good to see you. Remember, I was a homeless person and you helped me and everything. I'm like, yeah, well, why don't you come back? You, you know, why don't you pay it forward? I don't know about that. And it's like, well, yeah, we, we need to know about that. We need, need to know about that. A- amen. And your love rubs off on other people and improve your friendships. And what best place to make friends, as I say, is church. Best place to make friends. We're supposed to know a lot about friendship. Galatians 5, verse 22, because we're supposed to, this is why, because we're supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, because people aren't perfect, but Jesus Christ is perfecting his church. Jesus is making a glorious church. We're supposed to be going out of here as a glorious church. Amen. Amen. A glorious church. I was meditating on it a whole lot. I called Mary Jane Stephan, I think it was yesterday. You know, and uh, I said, hey, Mary Jane, how's it going and stuff like that and everything. And I said, Jesus is coming back again soon. I said, she said, yeah, but there needs to be a work done in church because Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. He's coming back for a glorious church. Amen. But so we need love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, uh, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Temperance is what? Self-control. Against such there is no law. And so And helping is what? Is not being selfish. Uh, a lot of people are uh, uh, today. I, I believe, yes, I believe in the law of mutual benefit. When you give, when you go, when you like, when you go to work, you're giving them service. What do they give to you? They give to you money, money back, and it's a law of mutual benefit. But uh, but also giving and helping others isn't about being selfish. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? I don't know. Just do what Jesus said. Just do it. Lord told me to do something this week. He says, Chris, I just want you to do it. I said, Lord, I don't understand. He said, I just want you to do it. I said, okay, I'll do what you tell me to do in in helping others. It had to do with helping somebody. I was like, Lord, I don't quite understand everything here. You don't have to understand everything. You don't have to understand everything. Who's Lord? Jesus. Jesus is Lord. You don't have to understand everything. So helping is not about being selfish. Well, what's in it for me? I don't want to do this. It's kind of funny when you're, when you're trying, to, we're trying to teach youth in the youth group. I don't want to wash anybody's car. I don't want to wash their dirty car. Well, why not? You know, and then usually when we're doing it, they're getting money anyways. I still, I don't, I don't know. That's not enough money to, for me to wash. Uh, um, how many of you ever wash your parents' car when you're growing up? Hello? I'm not, our family had four cars. My dad said, go wash the cars. Cars. <laughs> you know? I said, oh, yes, sir. Sure, yes. And he said, and I, I didn't say, what's in it for me? He'd say, well, you get to eat dinner at the table tonight. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I never said that. 
And see, with something we need to teach this younger generation, help us not being selfish. Having an impact on somebody could help you change your outlook on life and attitude on life. I've known some people who have committed suicide. And they, they were tremendous blessings when they were helping people. And we need to remember that, that we're, we're blessings. When, so have a positive impact on somebody else's life and outlook and attitude. Hebrews 13, verse 16 says this, But to do good and communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Because it will be a sacrifice. I thank God for people sacrificing and helping in the church. It's a sacrifice, a sacrifice. Hello. I think that's from Scooby Doo. <laughs> uh, okay. And, uh, you know, we have people who come early and they sacrifice, they give their time and their work. And I thank God for that. I thank God for my wife, the sacrifices she makes. Amen. For other people in the church who sacrifice. Praise God. Amen. You're a blessing. I thank God for that. And with the sacrifices, the Bible says that God is what? Well pleased. So, um, so when you help somebody out and you're really helping, you can feel rewarded and fulfilled. And you feel a sense of belonging when you help. And when you're with a large group of people in a volunteer organization like the church uh, and just two friends exchanging words of advice, helping people creates a feeling of what? Community. And face-to-face -face activities such as volunteering at the church can reduce your loneliness and isolation. Sometimes people say, well, I don't have any friends. I want you to have friends. I want you to have friends. And a friend it isn't just what, what, what's in it for me. Now listen, what, what I mean by what's in it for me. Uh, I've noticed when I go down Brownsville Road and, and if I'm trying to hire people and give them money, I have a lot of friends when I have a lot of money in my pocket. I have a lot of friends. Like, I'm your friend. Yeah. Even the world does that. I remember, you, you know, before I was sanctified, I'd go in the bar and be like, Chris. You know, and, then, and when everybody goes like, around, you know, I'm going to buy a beer from everybody in here. And everybody like, hip, hip, hooray. Until you want your money's all gone. And then they're not your friend. They want you to give you a ride home. What type of friend is that? Uh, okay, that's not a good friend. Uh, okay, and, but when you help other people, again, like I said it will make you feel thankful and, and, uh, and it give you a sense of renewal and can teach you to help yourself. And, uh, and sometimes people have a case of the blues. You know, some people even listen to the blues music. If you like blues, God bless you. I'll pray for you. You, you know, but uh, like I said, you can always go to a nursing home or something, you know, and pray for other people. Amen. Even see something on the news and pray for people and, and to keep that cycle of happiness going forward. And when, when you see someone else help another person, it gives you a good feeling. Amen. I, I had a good feeling, like your sister Jessica, I had a good feeling. Man, I mean, the mayor was, has said something at Pittsburgh. Praise. Praise God for our mayor. Again, let's pray for him right now. Father God, we pray for our mayor. But he got a big job to do. And Lord, we pray you help him. Give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father God, we pray that his walk with Jesus Christ would be strong. And his children will be blessed. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And then, uh, so, it, it causes us to go out and to do something for other, other people. When we, we share in, I'm, I think I'm going to be talking about witnessing next week. That doesn't mean you take off that week. Okay, but when we share the gospel with other people, that means what? You're, you're caring. You're not being selfish when you tell other people about being saved. Tom self. They're having Antonio's uncle pa passed away this week. They're having the uh, the the viewing next door next door from two to four today, you know. And I would whenever I saw him, I would try to witness to him and tell him about Jesus, and, and help other people. And John fifteen thirteen says this: This is my commandment that you love one another, as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life. For his friends. 
Yeah, okay. And then th- something I saw here too, you know, I always say Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure you meet with all measure back to you again. And it's really important. The first rate before that, uh, Jesus said, this is from, taken from the Sermon on the Mount and Luke's, uh, and it's also in Matthew and it's also, I believe, in Mark. It says, judge not lest ye be judged. Our job is not to go around judging people. We're not supposed to be judging people. Amen. We're supposed to be what? We're supposed to be loving them and helping them. You know, I just, I did get back from the week before. I got back from Disney and people say, well, there's a lot of homosexuals at Disney and there's a lot of lesbians. And I did see more this time. There were more lesbians and homosexuals there. But the Lord told me, he said, don't judge them. Don't judge them. If you get an opportunity, witness to them. Tell them about the love of Jesus. But don't judge them. Amen? And we're not supposed to judge each other either. Okay, judge not lest ye be judged. Condemn not lest ye be condemned. Forgive and you shall be forgiven. So we need to forgive other people. We don't need to necessarily judge. And you have the things that you believe, right? The things that you believe and, and the things in your lifestyle. Not everybody is the same. Not everybody is the same. Uh, um, some of you here, I'll explain more. I, I'm going to talk about me and not talk about you, okay? I'm a, uh, um, Coach says sometimes I talk about me, but I sure don't want to be talking about you. Occasionally, I, you know, I drink a Mountain Dew. A Mountain Dew. Okay. Now, a Mountain Dew has a lot of sugar in it. It's not the best. I looked this up. A Mountain Dew is, uh, is, is not really good for you. Hello? And, but I like the way they taste. And I'm praying that I don't get, have a taste for that anymore. I'm trying not to drink as many Mountain Dews. But somebody was talking to me this week, kind of, and they made me feel like I was going to hell because I was drinking Mountain Dew. Pastor Chris, you're going to hell because you drink Mountain Dew. Yahoo, Mountain Dew. Now, how is that helping me? Huh? If I go around telling people, you're going to hell because you drink Mountain Dew. Huh? No, no, that, that's not. The kingdom of God is not meat nor drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, they told me I should drink more water, and I was like, okay. And I talked to him. I, I did talk to him. And I said, you know, you, brother, you made me feel like I was going to hell because I'm drinking Mountain Dew. Hello? Now, is that a weighty thing? You all getting quiet on me because you know I'm heading towards you now. <laughs> If somebody, like, I, it's, it's, so that's probably a habit I'm trying to break in my life, not drinking Mountain Dews, okay? Sometimes people are trying to break the habit of what? Smoking cigarettes. Uh, okay, smoking cigarettes. Is smoking cigarettes going to send somebody to hell? No! No, that was a weak no. Come on. Is smoking cigarettes going to send somebody to hell? No. No. Some of you are still like, yeah, I think so. <laughs> No, 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 no. It is not. They might go to heaven before the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but it's not going to send anybody to hell. You know, so what we need to do is when you give love, you give love. And give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure you meet with all be measured back to you again. A- Amen. So praise God. Hallelujah. So we're to imitate. That leaves us here. We're to imitate Jesus Christ. We're supposed to do. What would Jesus do? And we talked about that in the youth camp that we had. Uh, Joyce and Faith talked about the youth. I think they even gave him a little with those wristbands again. WWJD. What would Jesus do? We're to imitate Jesus. In Matthew five verse sixteen it says, "Let your sh- light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven." Amen. So God gives us everything that we may do well with it. So uh, so receive more blessings. And all things in this life, even rewards for seeds to put in order for the future, for the future harvest. For the harvest of what? 
of souls. God cares about people getting saved. God is always giving. Jesus was always giving. God is love. Not love is God. The Bible doesn't say love is God. The Bible says God is love. Okay? Because then they go, if, if, if love is God, then I love, then I'm like God. No, you're not God. You're not God. God is love. And God's resources are forever. And God is inexhaustible. And he's still renewing his store. So if you help somebody out, God will help you renew your store so that you can help again. So you can help again and again and again and again and again. So a sower is, is so what? A somebody that gives. Say, I'm a sower. Yeah, I, you're right, a sower. And if you're a sower, God will provide you with means to sow. Again, the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower. I say it again, I'm a sower. So then now we're talking about what? Money. God will give you money if you're a sower. You know why people don't sometimes don't have any money? Because they're stingy. Oh, thank you for those three amens. <laughs> okay. Sometimes they don't have any money because they're stingy. And they say, well, no, you don't understand. I don't have any money because I don't have any money. No, you don't have any money because you're stingy. And then if, you're, if you have a giving heart, then God will give back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. That's why you get into the Word and learn about tithing and get, learn about giving. And then you start being blessed and, and you start doing God's Word and you start being a, a blessing to other people. And then God will bless you again. The problem is that some people haven't decided to be a sower, that I'm not going to sow. Now, I decided this in the natural. I decided not to sow anything in my gardens at my house. You know why? Because there's deer in my yard every day. There's probably like 20 deer that come by and visit Pastor Chris's house every day. Well, I didn't plant a garden because they're going to eat all my tomatoes up. I didn't plant any strawberries. I didn't plant anything. Last year, we couldn't even plant any tulips or daffodils or anything like that because they dug them up and ate them. And at one time, I put chicken wire over top of them, and they still dug them up and ate them. They moved the chicken wire. These are creative deer. <laughs> Uh, okay, but God will give seed to the sower. Say, I'm a sower. And God will show you. You say, well, I don't have a bunch of money. You could do something else. Amen. Sometimes Booker T didn't have any money, but he would make me some soul food. Say, Pastor Chris, I'm coming up. Come on, let's go hang out together. And we get some soul food. I'd be like, okay, yeah. And it was delicious. And I don't know how to cook soul food, but I'm so glad he knew how. And it was delicious. He'd bring me some collard greens, and he'd bring me this other stuff with pork and everything. It was delicious. Amen. And he, it, that's what I'm being saying as far as being a sower. And I said, where'd you get that? He said, I got it at Family Dollar or something like that. I was like, wow, man. I said, how much it cost? He said, about a dollar. I was like, man, that's good cooking for a dollar. Praise God. Being blessed causes us to give thanks to God. Uh, the, the, the giver loves to give. People see Jesus by your actions. And the gospel of Christ is a doctrine of grace, unmerited favor, life, and salvation by Jesus Christ. That's how we get saved. It's not by merit. That's what the Reformation was all about. Me and Sister Belinda were watching something about a movie on Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, the great reformer. And it's by grace that we're saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. It's by grace we're saved, not by merit. Amen. You don't have to buy an indulgence to, for, your, for, for sins to be forgiven. You don't pay money for your sins to be forgiven. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all on the cross. Praise God. Amen. And, and, uh, and the, the, they, so when you bless somebody the way God wants them, they glorify God. They give glory to God. You ever seen that? It's happened to me. Where some, when I needed a blessing really bad and somebody blessed me, I just started crying. Just started crying and thanking God and worshiping God and everything. And, uh, and uh, when I've done that to other people, and sometimes that's happened. And they just start almost crying and worshiping God. They forget all about me. That's okay. And they're not supposed to be thinking of me anyways. They're supposed to be thinking about God. Amen. From the throne of grace and giving thanks to God for their liberality to them. 
And God will do miracle after miracle after miracle. He's done them in my life, and I know he's done it in your life. He's going to do another miracle. Amen. So the gospel to the poor is what? That they don't need to be poor anymore. Philippians 2 verse 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Romans 51 says this, Now we who are strong ought to bear the weaknesses for those who are without strength and not just to please ourselves. So Christian love gives. So, so great is the goodness of God that we may have, have absolutely commanded us to give to our neighbor, but he promises to reward us back. He promises. G- give and it shall be given unto you what? Better. It will be given... What good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over means better. And I, some of you in the area, I want to encourage you. Some of you have given, but I'm believing God that God is going to give you back even better. Even, even better. Even better. Even better. Even better. Even better. And a lot of people have, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of people give away cars. Our church, Pittsburgh Christian, I think we gave away nine cars. Nine cars. Praise God. That's a wonderful thing. Amen. Amen. But I believe in God that God is going to give what? Back better. Get, give back better as it's given to you. Even better. Because God's always in the better business. Amen. He gives back better. Amen. And beautifully and surpassing. And you will be blessed. And you will be made rich. Now, let's take a look in Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. It says, For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. How many of you seen, ever seen James uh, Robinson on TV? He, he, he makes those uh, uh, wells for... And he goes in other countries and where people don't have any water, and he, he, he puts wells in, into that. And then so he gives people fresh, clean water. Praise God. That's a wonderful thing. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. And if you didn't take him in, you might have put him up in a hotel. Naked, and you clothed me. Praise God, and we've helped clothe. We got, still have a clothing ministry here in the church and uh, we got plenty of clothes up there now. We don't even need any more, but they're there to help people when they need clothes. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Amen. Now, not everybody's called to do all these things, but you're called to do something. Amen. I, I visited a lot of people in prison, men, not women. I, I always felt men should minister to men, women should minister to women. I've gone in and talked to them. You know, you pick up the telephone and you talk to them and try to, because I always thought, what, how would I feel if I was in prison? How would I feel if I'd want somebody to come and visit me? And man, if the pastor came to visit me, I'd be like almost crying. I'd be like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And then shall the righteous answer, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungry, or fed thee, or thirsty, or gave thee drink? When saw thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? When saw thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say, Verily I say unto you, and so much you have done it to one at least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Praise God. So my last point here this morning is you cannot outgive Jesus. Pastor Mark used to say that all the time. He used to say, you can't outgive God. You can't outgive God. And God will bless you. And you try to give and give and give and give, and God will just bless you back. And, and we need to believe that. See, our Christians are our brothers. I think that's what Brother John was saying. Our brothers, that we're our Christian family. We're brothers. We're brothers in Christ. Amen. And we all deal with things and we need to help each other. And some people say, oh, I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I haven't met a perfect person yet. Right. Have you? No. And I met a few that said they were perfect, and then I hung around them a little bit, and guess what? They weren't. <laughs> they weren't. <perfect. laughs> 
you were hanging around the same person. <laughs> you, you know? But, but praise, that's why we're brothers. Even the apostle Paul, John, he said in the book of Revelation, he was the last apostle left. He was the last 12 apostles of the Lamb. He was the leader of the church uh, of Jesus Christ on the earth. And then he wrote, I'm your brother, John. He didn't say, I'm the great one. I'm the great one, so you all listen to me. He didn't say that. He said, I'm your brother, John. I'm your brother, Chris. And we're brothers and sisters in Christ, and we need to love each other and share that love more and more. So I encourage you, don't be selfish. Just, you ever watch little two-year-olds playing around? Huh? Yeah. I watch a lot. And what do they do? They have the little Barbie doll or this, that, and they go, mine, mine, mine. I was like, oh. You said just pray because they're not my kid. <laughs> Hello. I, I imagine Sister Denise had, had that in the nursery a few times. Just get a, a doll exactly the same for the other kid. Yeah, okay, isolation is a tool of the devil, and the devil will try to keep you from coming to church, keep you isolated all by yourself. Nobody loves me. I guess I'll go eat worms. <laughs> And many times people feel isolated and secluded. But call your friend. I called Pastor Mark yesterday. Something was bugging me. Somebody said some things to me. It wasn't very nice. Hurt my pride. And that's what hurt my pride. And the Bible says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and then he will exalt you up. So I talked to them, and I talked to Sister Belinda first. She said, I don't worry about it. I called him on the phone. He said, I said, Sister Belinda's probably right. Don't worry about it. He said, yeah, she's right. <laughs> Don't worry, but don't even think about it. It wasn't nice what the person did to you, but, but uh, you know better. Listen, we know better. And if we're older and we're smarter, we should act that way, right? Some of us, we're, we're, we're a lot older than some of these younger, younger people that come to church sometimes. We want some young people coming to our church. Lord, we want some young people coming. Amen. So if they say something kind of like that's unkind, you can handle it. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. You just save your piece of your mind. Just save it. Amen. Just save it. Yeah, we well, don't need it. Right. I was say, give it to your husband. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have a husband. That's probably why. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. That's not my nose. I love you, I love you, uh, I love you. Uh, yeah, I love you, amen. He, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and attains favor of the Lord. In Luke, I think it's my last scripture here yeah, this morning. It says, on Luke 10, verse 25, I one occasion an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. And he said, teacher or rabbi, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus responded, what is written in the law, he replied, and how do you read it? And he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. And you have answered correctly, Jesus replied, do this and you will live. And he wanted to justify himself, so he asked, who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man went, was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he was attacked by robbers. And they stripped him of his clothes and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And a priest happened to go down to the same road, and the priest was supposed to be somebody who was full of compassion and love of God. Uh, so the priest went, when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. And so to a Levite, and Levite is somebody who, 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 who worked in the church, the tribe of Levi worked in the, in the temple. And they were workers. And they're like deacons and people who worked in the church. So to a Levite, when he came to the place, saw him and passed by on the other side. And they were supposed to be standards of God's love and compassion. But a Samaritan, that was somebody who was from Samaria, or a half-breed, somebody might say. As he traveled, he came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. And went to him and bandaged his wounds and pouring in on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey. Gave him a ride in his own car. Even though he was drunk. He could have threw up in the car. 
He could have threw up on the donkey, but it doesn't say he did. Brought him to an inn to take care of him. And the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, look after him. And he said, when I return, I'll reimburse you for any expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was neighbor to the man that fell in the hands of the robbers? The experts in the law said, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do thou likewise. And so Jesus Christ should be, should be the foundation of our giving. Amen. And it's just really important. Now, I want God to bless you even more and more and more and more financially. One thing I have noticed is, is a, a proneness. I've, a proneness, sometimes poor people are more prone to help other poor people. A little bit sometimes more compassionate. But I want you to be blessed. I want you to be rich, very rich, like Abraham. And you have the blessing of Abraham on you. But keep a nice, soft heart of compassion and love towards other people. Some people say, oh, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care about them. I don't care about them. Who's the them? What are you talking about? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And so Jesus Christ should be our foundation for kingdom. And the kingdom of God is a glorious kingdom. It's a glorious kingdom. It's not a magical kingdom. We don't, magic has to do with magic and the devil and all that stuff. The kingdom of God is a glorious kingdom. Amen. A glorious kingdom. The candlesticks, I was studying this yesterday, the candlesticks in the book of Revelation were made out of pure gold. Remember I shared last week, how, did, how you know how they made gold? How many of you ever watched that Hobbit movie? You ever watched the Hobbit movie or something like that? What happens is they mine and they mine, they get, they get gold dust mixed in with the dirt and they take that all and then they have to separate the dirt from the gold and then they cook it <coughs> they cook it and then what happens is they cook it all up and that um, scum or that stuff is on the top and they scrape that the part top off and then there's pure gold and molten gold and God is making us gold the kingdom of God is glorious and you know, gold never tarnishes either. Silver sometimes tarnishes and everything. And sometimes gold can tarnish a little bit because my mom had some golden spoons. And that's how I know. Sometimes they got tarnished a little bit. And I didn't quite understand that. I still don't. But actually, gold does, it doesn't really tarnish. And Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What happened? God is purifying our hearts. He's not finished yet. He's still working in our lives. Sometimes he's, we're, we're in the cooker. Oh. I, and I, I, I don't like it when I'm in the cooker. How about you? Hello? Yeah. But he, what does he want? He wants the pure gold. He wants us to walk in pure love. Pure love towards other people. Amen. And so, and don't forget in closing, don't forget about this three years. Help people who are who were uh, in the golden candlesticks at the church at the time. At the time, they, they had seven churches. Seven is, is God's number of completion. Seven, but there were probably 700 churches, and those churches just represented uh, the, the other churches, and God was really using those churches a whole lot. And we have churches in our Pittsburgh area that God is really using even more than our church. And thank God for those churches. Thank God for those churches. But thank God that God is working in your life. And God is working in your life and your importance. So help those who are less, less than you. Help, help people who are your peers. And help people who are doing better than you. They're doing better than they because they're doing a good work. Amen. Amen. With this bless you today, this is what the Lord had me to share about helping others. I wish there was more folks here today hearing this. But we, we got a good bunch of people here. Amen. And if we're doing this. Now... With, let's have every head bow and every eye close. With every head bow and every eye closed, perhaps there's a person in this place and, and uh, you've never prayed and received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, but God is knocking on the door of your heart and he's asking you to let him to come in. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short the glory of God and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, that you'd be saved. This is how you get saved, by confessing Jesus. Not by doing works, but by, by confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're here and you've never done that, you'd like to do that, raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Is there anybody here who'd like to pray and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior? Oh, praise God. How, how many say, yeah, I'm saved, I'm living for Jesus? Raise your hand. Praise God. Remember Jesus, how many of your arms broken? No. <laughs> uh, it doesn't work. Praise God. Amen. So what we need to do, we just need to go and be doers of the word. Amen. Go and be doers of the word. Praise God. We, we got enough people in this room to turn the whole world upside down. Amen. So let's, let's close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your word that gone forth, that, that will not return void, but accomplish what you please, and it shall prosper where to your Senate. Lord, help each and every one of us. Help me as the pastor. Help Sister Belinda as the pastor's wife. Help, help the leaders in the church and each and every person, Father God, to be used as your instrument in helping others, helping to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, I love you. God bless you. And you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.